have your Bibles with you this morning. I'm reading from Psalm 116, right in the middle of your Bible, if you have a whole Bible. Psalm 116. Keep your Bibles open there after we read the reading. Psalm 116, right in the middle of your Bible. I'm always thinking there's someone like me. Almost 50 years ago when I was saved, the pastor used to get up and give the scripture and I hadn't even found it and he was reading away. I didn't know where Genesis was. And some, somebody bought me a new Bible with Thumbtacks Bible. I knew more about Genesis than Genesis. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe there's someone who, just the middle of your Bible very near in the Psalms in 116. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. Sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, and mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore I have spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of the old Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord will bless to us the reading of his own inspired and fallible word. Our Father, we thank thee for our sister who sung, do bless her and use her in the church. Lord, we miss Flora this morning, and we ask that you'll touch her and heal her, and you'll strengthen her body. And you'll bring her in amongst us very soon. Lord, as we turn to your word this morning, just like the two on the road to a mess, open our eyes, open our understanding, open the scriptures, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. For Jesus' sake, amen. I, I want to speak this morning about being thankful, having gratitude. Brothers and sisters, are we really thankful this morning for what the Lord hath delivered us from. There are many in this church this morning, I could call out some names, and God has given you a great deliverance. Some I don't know and really delivered. But are you really thankful? Can you say this morning, with real gratitude in your heart, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Yes, thank you, Lord, for giving to me Amen. thy great salvation. So rich, so free. You see, this psalm is a beautiful psalm of thanksgiving. We, we can't read it without being moved and then counting our blessings and naming them one by one. As I go around the different places and I travel, I'm very grieved sometimes. People, Christian people, they're not thankful. They have no gratitude. This psalm pictures a man desperately in love with the Lord. Look at verse 1 as we come down the psalm. I love the Lord. What a way to begin a psalm. I love the Lord. But then every child of God should say that without hesitation. I love the Lord. Of course, this was the requirement of the law. Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. But it only can be produced in a person redeemed by the grace of God. After all, how can a person prove? How can he prove that he's saved by the grace of God? Only by the life he lives and the love he shows. Did not our Lord say, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have loved one toward another? Did not John say, we know that we have passed? Think of this, we have passed from, from death unto life. 
because we love the brethren. But what a way to begin a psalm. This is what struck me right away when I read this psalm. I love the Lord. What a way to begin a psalm. But is it not a good way to begin a new day, a new life, a new job, a new business, a new marriage? To, 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 to come boldly, have a bold confession of our love for God. Surely, surely it will determine what comes next. For, for after all, we have nailed our colours to the mask. When you go into a new job and maybe unsafe, right away you tell them, I love the Lord. I belong to the Lord. My everything changes from that. I had a dear friend who saved the same time as me and he went through the army. And I often wondered how he could go through. And he went for them 20 years through the army, come out still a Christian. And he told me that wherever he went in the billets in the army, wherever he was based, he used to take his, his things out and put them. And then he used to take his Bible and put, it, put his Bible out. And the minute he put his Bible out, that changed everything. <laughs> Didn't ask him to go along to the pubs. Didn't ask him to go to places. You see, there was a change. A bold confession of, I love the Lord. Verse 1, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Look at verse 2. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore I will call upon his name as long as I live. Watch that carefully. I love the Lord because. Now that's what struck me. I love the Lord because. You see, there's a consequence. Our love, there's always a consequence in our love. Because. John says in 1 John 4, and he ought to know he was the disciple of love. John says we love him because he first loved us. There's the consequence. Brothers and sisters, Balamoni this morning, listen. God's love's quite the opposite from our love. Listen to me very carefully. You see, God's love is not a consequent love. God's love is a causeless love. You watch that very carefully. You see, friends, God loves us because God is love. Not because of what we are, but because of what he is. God is love. In the beginning of this psalm, David's looking back. And I could go into the background of it. I don't want to do that this morning. But David's looking back and he, he's thinking about the past. And as he thinks about the past, there's a deliverance that love remembers. There's a deliverance that love remembers. He's looking back. And I want some of you to look back and think of the day you were saved. Yes. And there's a love, that, there's a deliverance that love remembers. And remembering God's delivering mercy, David thinks perhaps of two things. In verse 1, he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Look at verse 2, you have your Bible. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Now get your Bible, look at your Bible. You see, he heard him. David prayed and God heard him. Our God is a prayer hearing God. Maybe you're the here this morning and you've got something and there's something troubling your life and you've told everybody else about it but you haven't told God about it. But I want to tell you God is a God-hearing God. As oft as we ask, it shall be given. As oft as we seek, we shall find. As oft as we knock, it shall be opened unto us. Now put those together. I never seen that the one morning. Put those together. Ask, seek, knock. A for ask, S for seek, K for knock. A, S, K. That's all in the asking. And he's more willing to give than we are to ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Oh, friends, Abraham prayed. God heard him. God answered his prayer. Moses prayed. God heard him. Elijah prayed. God heard him. David prayed. God heard him. Friends, if we pray, God will hear us. But you look at your Bible, verse 6, God not only heard them, but verse 6 says God helped them. <laughs> he not only heard them, but he helped them. Look what it says. I was brought low and he helped me. Oh, God not only heard them, but he helped me. The priest and the Levite, they heard the cry of the wounded man on the road to Jericho. Oh, they heard him, but they didn't help him. I love the Lord. I love the Lord because he heard me. He helped me. Oh, how thankful David is. What a testimony. How grateful is David's heart. Are we grateful this morning? 
You know what the Lord says when, whenever one leper came back? The Lord says, where are the other nine? Were there not ten that were cleansed? And out of, out of all God's bountiful blessings, out of all the blessings, there's only one out of ten comes back to thank him. And you know, the one that came back, he was made whole. He not only got healed, but he, he was made whole. Oh, Fred, I want you to see this. Are we really grateful? Are we really thankful? There were three things David remembers. You look at it, verse 8. His soul was delivered from tragedy. Verse 8. Thou hast delivered my soul from death. Friends, God had intervened miraculously to, to extend David's life. God intervened. He'd done the same for Hezekiah. He extended Hezekiah's life by 15 years. He did the same for David. Friends, think about this. How many times has God done this for us? You'll excuse me being personal, but the troubles had only started. And I was at the building and had a wee van. And on the prayer meeting night, we just took the wee van, Lily and me, and we're driving down towards the big clock you're meeting. The big clock is the Albert clock. And we're driving, and as I stopped, the lights went red. I'll always remember this. Lily was with me. And this chap come up alongside of me here, started to curse me. And I put down, and in the van, the, the Bedford van, I was higher than he was. And I looked down at him, and he starts to curse me. Why didn't you go on? I says, the lights were red, son. And then he cursed me again, and off he went. And as he left me from here to the middle of the church, there was such a bang. The little box he had in his hand was a bomb. And as he got from here to the middle of the church, it went off. In the van, my van, the window, it van com completely turned completely round. And Lily got a wee bit hysterical. I says, look, we're all right, we're all right. And my, the car that he was in was blew to pieces. And as I got out, the, there was two legs just lying and no top to it. Lily says, what will we do? I says, we'll go to the prayer meeting and thank the Lord for miraculous deliverance. How many times has he done this for you? Be honest with me this morning. Think about it though. Many dangers, toils and snares I have already come. T'was grace that brought me now this far. And grace will lead me home. Oh, I know this is just a simple wee message. But as I meditated, as I got it, bless my heart. And so I thought it would bless the saints in Balamone. I love the Lord because, you see, God's salvation in Christ has delivered our soul from death. What a thought. You read Hebrews 2, 14, 15. I read it at 6 o'clock this morning. You read Hebrews 2, if you've got a pencil. Hebrews 2, 14, 15, and you'll see that. His soul was delivered from tragedy. But something else, look at verse 8. His eyes were delivered from tears. David had made many mistakes. But then who in our gathering has not made mistakes? If the Lord was to mark iniquity, who amongst us would stand? David had made mistakes. Most of us have spoken like this out of turn. We have been hurt in God's house. There's been some great calamity has come along. And in our haste, in my haste, I said all men are liars. And in our haste, we've said something we should never have said. We're only human. And we wish we could take it back. We're, we're sorry for what was said. David's like this. He's so honest. He admits he has spoken in he has, and, and now he's grieved and he thinks about it. He's sorry. But then he's so thankful. God has forgiven him and wiped away his tears. All the deliverance that love remembers. My soul delivered from tragedy. Mine eyes delivered from tears. Look at verse 8 again. My feet delivered from temptation. Look, look, for thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, my feet from falling. Brothers and sisters, Balamoni this morning, God established David. God delivered David from falling. God gave David a firm foundation. He lifted him out of the miry clay. We know that psalm. He put his feet upon a rock. He established, he put a new song in his mouth. He established his goings. We preacher I used to know said one time years ago, he took him up, he set him up, and then he tuned him up. That's right. Out of the mire and into the choir. Oh, friends, the deliverance that love remembers. God commendeth his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Beloved, this morning, we weren't even thinking about God. But he was thinking about us. 
I love the Lord because what about you this morning? What about me this morning? What do we love the Lord for this morning? What has he delivered us from? Are we really thankful? Have we got a heart of gratitude this morning? As you sit in the pew, are you really thankful? All oh, the deliverance that love remembers. I want you to see my second little point here. I want you to see the determination that love renders. Look at verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? David's so glad, but now he wants to render something back in return. What shall I render unto for all his benefits towards me? How can any of us repay the Lord for all his bountiful blessings? How could we ever repay him? I, I'm thinking even in my mind just now of, of one benefit, the word of God. Think about the word of God you hold in your hand. What if we had no Bible? No word of God in this sinful world. No light to guide our path. No assurance of sins forgiven. No hope of the future of the Lord coming back. Thank God we've got his word. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits? Oh, the determination that love renders. Look with me quickly. You've got your Bible. Look at verse 13. This is what David's going to do. I will take the cup of salvation. You watch that. I wish I could stay on that. I will take the cup of salvation. Are you glad you're saved this morning? Are you really glad you're saved? I will take the cup of salvation. Do you know what Paul says? David says that, that it's of the Lord, the salvation. There's no other way except of the Lord. But David says in Psalm 3, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. But, but Paul says in Hebrews 2, he says it's a great, it's a great salvation. I was thinking as I was praying, it's great because of the person. It's great because of the price that was paid. It's great because of the pardon. We sung about it this morning. My chains fell off. I rose and followed thee. Oh, it's great because of the person. It's great because of the price. It's great because of the pardon. It's great because of the prospect. I'm going to be with the Lord forever. What a salvation. Brothers and sisters, it's great to be saved. It's great to be separated. It's great to be satisfied. It's great to be serving Jesus. Can you see David's participation? Verse 13. Look at David's proclamation, verse 4. This is his proclamation. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. This is a way back in the Psalms in the Old Testament. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Think about that, friends. You remember the day you done that? How many times have you done it ever since? O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Brothers and sisters, we ought to pity those people who are praying, who are shouting at a deaf heaven. They're shouting at a deaf heaven the names of so-called saints. It's not the name of Mary. It's not the name of Buddha, nor Muhammad, nor Confucius that God honors. Listen to me, friends. Friends, these names are the names of bankrupt sinners. Doesn't matter how great they are on earth among men. These great men cannot move the heart nor the hand of God. Paul says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's exactly what David done. Peter says, there's no, other, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's what Peter done. That's what I done 50 years ago when he, he delivered me. David was going to proclaim to all and sundry, what a proclamation. The Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Can you see his participation? Can you see his proclamation? Look, look, look at his pathway. Verse 9. Look at his pathway. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. From now on, David had made up his mind. This was choice. You've got the choice. This is not chance. If you're here this morning and you're not following the Lord, I want you to make a choice this morning. It's not by chance, but it's a choice. And of course, this choice is made by faith. Paul says we, we walk not we walk by faith and not by sight. I want you to see this. We, we can make no better choice. We could have no better company. Watch this. Walking with God implies choice of one's company. Walking with God implies choice of closeness. 
choice of the Lord's presence. Not only his company, but his closeness. Walking with God means he's by our side. When I was first saved, we used to sing, they don't hear these old hymns now, but they used to sing the wee chorus was, hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way, hand in hand we cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way, walking thus we cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus. Listen, friends, walking with God implies choice. Choice of company, choice of closeness, choice of counsel, choice of control. You see, anyone who walks with God has no argument with God. In fact, if I know my Bible and be a workman and need but be ashamed, friend, in fact, they're in full agreement with God. Why is that? Well, Amos the prophet said, can two walk together except they be agreed? You've got to be in agreement with God to walk with God. Walking with God implies choice. Choice of one's company. Choice of one's closeness. It implies counsel. It it implies control. It implies progress. Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Oh, his walk, verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. You see, walking with God, with the Lord, has, has earthly and it has eternal benefits. I want you to watch this very quickly. This is why the churches are empty in today. Because Christians are not walking with God. Because they're not seeing it. There's no standard. The standard's coming down. The world is the church. The church is the worldly. You wouldn't know the difference. Walking with the Lord has earthly and eternal benefits. Enoch. Enoch walked with God. Genesis 5.25 And you say, well, it's not the same today, the day we're living in. Oh, yes, it was far worse. Could I I just make a wee suggestion? Because I I preached it some night in the gospel. You see, when Enoch walked with God, there was surrounding gloom. Oh, I don't want to go into that. But it was, if you go to the book, there was surrounding gloom. But in the midst of this surrounding gloom, thank God there was saving grace. (laughs) Praise God. That's why I'm an evangelist. For sin abounds, grace abounds the more, friends. And in this surrounding gloom, there was saving grace, but there was something else. There was simple godliness. The Bible says, in in the midst of all this surrounding gloom, he walked with God. Do you know what the Bible says about Enoch? Before God took him, it says he pleased God. Think about that. He pleased God Almighty. There was another man. There was another man that was said about. In fact, the Lord opened the heavens twice. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He pleased God, surrounding gloom, saving grace, simple godliness. But then there was sudden glory. (laughs) There was sudden glory. He went out for a walk one day and he didn't come back. When I was preparing this little message, Lily sometimes shouts at me. You wouldn't think that, but she sometimes shouts at me. And when I was preparing, I, I love to get for hours, but I know it must be hard enough because she says, you're up there four hours. I've got to get some messages. And I says, Lily, stop shouting at me. You see, someday and I come down the stairs, and I'll always remember, just last week, I says, if you keep shouting at me, I'll do what Enoch done. And I can see her face. She says, what did Enoch do? I says, he went out and he never come back. And something else, I looked for him and I couldn't find him. <laughs> That's just for laughs. I thought you were getting a wee bit dull. And... <laughs> Enoch walked with God. Noah walked with God. And the Lord preserved him out of the great flood. And the Lord will preserve us. It says in Malachi, many souls were turned to the Lord. Oh, yes. Because of Levi's walk with God. I love that. I'm hoping in the wee kitchen house that I live in, in my lady's road, it's a wee hard place. There's hardly anybody in the place in the street. There's hardly anybody that's not just li- living with each other. There's none of them married. And I don't think there's a, I think there's only one Christian in the whole two, three hundred houses. But I'm hoping that my walk, that someday they'll watch me Lily and me and they'll see her walk and it will speak to their hearts. Oh, there's great rewards in those that will walk with God. Let me finish. The determination that love renders. You see his participation. 
Take the cup of salvation. You see his proclamation calling upon the Lord. You see his pathway walking before the Lord daily. I want you to see his payment. Verse 14, his payment. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Hear my last words. David was determined to give an immediate demonstration. David had remembered what God done for him and he's determined. Look at the word now. Now. He was not going to wait for a more convenient time or a less embarrassing time. But now, God had been so good to him. Oh, the deliverance that love remembered. I love the Lord because he heard me. He helped me. The determination that love renders. David was going to pay his vows. David was going to show his gratitude now by his witness, by his word, by his walk. By his worship. Surely, brothers and sisters, we ought to live a life of continual praise and thanksgiving for all the bountiful blessings of God. Praise him for answered prayer. Praise him for daily guidance. Praise him for miraculous deliverances. Praise him for the sweet fellowship of God's people. Praise him for the day he saved us, called us to serve him. Praise him for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Praise him for the blessed hope of his return. Praise him for victory over death, over sin, over Satan. I love the Lord because he first loved me. What about our witness? What about our walk? What about our worship? What about our our love for God's word? Are we really thankful this morning? I pray we are. I wonder, would 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 you play a little chorus for me? And then the pastor will come up. It's more than ever before, Lord, I love you. More than ever before, Lord, I love you. Thank you for listening. and sing at this time the thing that struck me as psalm was the fact that David said Lord I am thy servant the word there come a translated slave when you're God's servant and God's slave then you want to work for him you want to love him you want to serve him I have discovered in my ministry that people that are truly serving the Lord brother Murray are grateful people thankful people They just want to give God thanks and praise all the time. They love church. They enjoy church. They're they're not hypercritical, but they just come along and they're here to get a blessing from God and to bless the Lord. Is that how you're feeling this morning? Come on, lift it right up more than ever. Let's be His servants.
Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with new videos as they come online.